I was 20 years old when SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom was released on the Xbox. Because I was 20, this kid's game flew right under my radar, and I continued playing Halo LAN parties. However, there is a whole generation of gamers whose first game console was the Xbox, and Battle for Bikini Bottom is now their treasured childhood memory. I didn't even know this game was in my house, but it is, so I gave it a spin. SpongeBob SquarePants is a 3D platformer released on the Xbox, GameCube, and PlayStation 2 during the holidays in 2003. You take control of SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy on your quest to stop an invasion of robots from taking over Bikini Bottom. The game eases you into the action, with a tutorial of sorts showing off the different moves SpongeBob can perform. It is here we also learn we want to collect shiny objects and golden spatulas. The golden spatulas are the key to progression. After collecting our first one, we can now exit SpongeBob's pineapple. From here, we can explore Bikini Bottom and talk to a few of the game's characters. This acts as a hub world of sorts, and we can see a few taxi locations that require a specific amount of golden spatulas to progress. In the first real level of the game, we must try to progress through the jellyfish fields to try and obtain some King Jellyfish Jelly to help out Squidward. The level is massive and long, and the journey to the showdown with the King Jellyfish himself took 50, 5 zero minutes. This really sets the pace for the title. Levels aren't really that well defined and just sort of go on for a really long time. Thankfully, there are plenty of checkpoints, and you can save at any time. While I'm not a fan of the title's snail-like pace, I am a big fan of the controls, specifically the jumping. The game's jumping controls are as good as any third-person game released today. There are plenty of areas where the battle for Bikini Bottom asks you to make repeated tight jumps, and it's really easy and, quite frankly, fun. Each of the playable characters has their own unique moveset as well, and the game will occasionally give you the opportunity to switch at designated bus stops. Patrick can pick up objects and throw them, which is useful for hitting switches. There are also specific stones which he can pick up, like the Free Stone, which turns water to ice. Sandy is probably my favorite character. Her lasso is quite versatile, allowing her to hover great distances. She can also use her lasso as a swing of sorts, allowing her to swing through levels like Spider-Man. Lastly, she can lasso up enemies from a safe distance. Again, the game's controls are really excellent and make the game a lot of fun. What isn't a lot of fun is the camera, which very much feels like an N64 game. It's never where you want, and you'll fight with it anytime you need to change directions. Besides the aforementioned pacing problems, the levels in SpongeBob SquarePants offer a decent amount of variety, and in general are well thought out. I did get stuck a few times, which is odd for a game aimed at kids. In this particular sub-level, there are four doors, north, south, east, and west. The level progresses as expected, and then sort of stops. I have no idea how to open the south door. Whatever is behind this door is necessary to get a golden spatula from Mr. Krabs. I eventually gave up, backtracked my way out of the level, and moved on to the next section of the game. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom features a great presentation, and from what I can tell, all of the voices from the popular cartoon are here and accounted for. If I was 7 years old in 2003, I'm sure I would have loved this. Being 30, I find there's just a bit too much story in talking. Graphically, I find SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom very appealing. It's not a technical showpiece by any stretch of the imagination. However, the draw distances are very long, and the game runs at a steady 60 frames per second. Overall, it reminds me of an N64 game with simplistic 3D models and simplistic textures. However, the screen pops with a lot of bright colors. Something about the overall presentation really appeals to my retro gaming tastes. It's also worth mentioning the character models look terrific and do a good job of bringing the flat cartoon characters into a fully three-dimensional world. SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy are animated beautifully, and it really holds up well 11 years later. The sound and music follow suit. The voice acting matches the cartoon, and the quality is great. 
The background music matches the SpongeBob universe perfectly and helps each level feel unique. The sound effects are plentiful and again, just feel right. The graphics and sound deliver everything you could ask for in a 3D platformer. Overall, I find SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom to be a solid 3D platformer. However, I would only recommend it to fans of the genre. If you aren't really a fan of early 3D collectathons, there really isn't anything here that sets it apart from other titles in the genre. Fans of 3D platformers will be more forgiving of its slow pace and should enjoy the good level design and high quality presentation. If you're 15 years old, chances are this game has some nostalgia for you. It's SpongeBob SquarePants, Battle for Bikini Bottom for the Xbox.